One of the absolute best foods you can eat for muscle, athletic performance, recovery, strength, is beef. Almost no other food out there matches beef in terms of its key nutrients, how easily you assimilate them. Protein, creatine, it's quite possibly close to the perfect food for athletes. So if you're looking to build muscle and strength and improve athletic performance, Beef. It's it's uh, it's a good thing to so eat. What's for dinner? I mean, I Where's said the, the beef? Yeah, <laughs> I almost said that. <laughs> beef. It's what's for dinner. I mean, where We're is not the, by where those commercials been? I mean, it, where's the beef? So a a ribeye steak yeah. covers every essential vitamin nutrient that we could potentially need. It does. I mean, okay. Now I'm not advocating that you just eat beef. Uh, you could. That doesn't mean you should, but my point with this is that if you're looking at like key nutrients that people tend to lack or tend to find, uh, or nutrients that we tend to be deficient in that cause things like weakness or low energy, yeah. B, vitamins, B vitamins, iron, iron creatine, protein, protein. Yes. Uh, and grass fed meat has a great fatty acid profile. Cause one of the, one of the criticisms of beef is, oh, it's so high in saturated fat. So high in these omega fatty acids that are inflammatory. Conventional beef can be that way, but grass-fed beef has a way better omega-3, omega-6 fatty acid profile, um, and it's just leaner anyway. So it's it's more of a protein food yeah. when you compare like fatty cuts. But yeah, like if you want to get your B vitamins up and your iron uh, and zinc and other things like that, like beef not only contains those things, but it contains very bioavailable forms of them because you can get iron from plant sources. You don't absorb it. Yeah. Nearly as well. Not even close. Like if you have like an iron deficiency or, you know, like go eat some beef. It's one of the easiest ways to, to bring it up. And then B vitamins, like I said. Yeah. And then you get your um, organ meat, which is you take a whole nother level to that in yeah. terms of condensed nutrients and minerals and, you know, through liver and uh, everything else like organ meat wise, you can heart and whatnot. So. Organ meat's so high, you have to be careful not to yeah, eat too exactly. much. Exactly. Right? Some of it. Yeah. You can overdose. Basically. Some of it. You know, what's weird about organ meat is that if you eat an organ... <clears throat> Uh, it contains the amount that contains the nutrients that your organ it, that corresponds to it need quite a bit of. For example, okay, Liver King. For, <laughs> no, you know that was his, that you know that was his big his big thing, right? Was it? Yeah, that well, was his, that why that. he ate so many balls. Yeah, yeah, no, that was like so his his big his big thing where he was traveling around all over the place and talking about how he eats like every every organ, everything yeah. from from balls, heart, everything like that is that the nutrients from that. From balls goes to better testosterone production. The, for heart goes to better heart health. Like. Well, here's how it works. Like, okay, so like heart, your heart requires a lot of a nutrient called CoQ10. Eating heart, it means you're going to get a lot of CoQ10 because heart tissue contains lots of CoQ10. The brain, right? Let's say you eat brains. Not advocating eating brains. I think that's probably one of the more dangerous organs well, to just eat. Just because of prions. Yeah, all that yeah. weird stuff. But but uh, very high in cholesterol. Why? The, the human brain is very high in cholesterol. So there's some truth in that. Now he went too far. Yeah. Uh, I don't think eating a lot of balls is going to give you well, um, yeah. bigger balls. Or Hasn't done like anything that. for Justin. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I just like day. the taste. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> he took it to Delicious. the next level. Uh, uh, he does it for scared. the flavor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't be scared. <laughs> but you know, when it comes to, when it comes to, uh, to, to like foods that are like anabolic and you know, okay. Now uh, to be clear, your diet is going to, is varied. There's lots of components to your diet. So, uh, you know, that's, that's clear, but if you have to pick one food that really meets lots of these needs and that could be labeled as anabolic pro strength, athletes have known this for years. Strength athletes have known this for years. Beef is a king when it comes to this beef, eggs, those two foods right there, uh, will give you quite a bit. And uh, I've done this with clients Well, they'll eat the same exact diet, mm -hmm. same macros and everything. And then they'll include more beef versus chicken or fish. And they notice strength gains. Usually, usually well, what happens even too, I know, I've heard like people kind of bring up the fact that, uh, you know, around the world, like people don't, that are in like third world countries, like their, um, their whole value system is in, in their livestock and their animals yeah. that they, they raise up and they, they bring, and that's like their only food source. And to, to, you know, have this blanket statement that beef is bad for you. Like, we, what are you doing to everybody else around the world that like survives off of Stupid. this? Stupid. But again, grass fed beef, uh, is is better if you eat a lot of beef. Like if you eat, like I do, I'll eat, I eat on average probably half a pound to a pound of beef on most days. So I eat a lot of red meats. The, it's the primary source of uh, whole food protein that I get. I go grass fed because uh, at that level, 
the fatty acid profile makes a difference. Now, if you eat beef here and there, doesn't make that big of a difference. But if you eat it as often as I do, uh, like my butcher box that I get every month, like that's, I would say 80% of the beef that I eat is comes from butcher boxes, yeah. grass fed. It's yeah. not the conventional stuff. I mean, we've always had, our rule has been, and I've talked about it more than once on the show. So some people are probably tired of hearing it, but it's just, when I'm home, we cook with the butcher box meat. And so that's my way of getting, because the truth is like, you'll never beat a grain fed fucking steak, dude. A grain fed fatty steak. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. It's just a different level of like it's fat. super palatable. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Or, or like a Wagyu steak. I mean, just so palatable the amount of fat that's in that steak. So when we eat out at a restaurant, I ate out at a restaurant the other day, like I'll order like a, a grain fed type of steak. But then when I'm home, which I'm eating home 80 to 90% of the time, right. I'm going to make a, a grass fed choice. And I think, and what, the best part about butcher box is that they have found a way, in my opinion, to make some of the best tasting meat that is grass fed. Because in the past I was just turned off yeah. by grass fed meat. You know, it it was so different that it was like, Oh, I, I didn't like the it. best from them. The one that I can almost, uh, that it, almost not tell the, the tri tip. one. Yeah. That you, I know you cooked that. A I had lot. a lot of the tri tip, uh, from, uh, you do a lot of tri tip in pork, right? Mm -hmm. I like what do you eat most pork? from there? I do tri tip. I'll do the steak tips. I'll do um, I'll do a little bit of the pork chop. But uh, what was the other one that I got into recently from them? But I mean, I have done the chicken nuggets, which was like a find, you know, from them for the kids and stuff, and for me. I was just liar. <laughs> 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 I steal it from the kids, but I make it for the kids and I eat it hey, myself. Hey, hey, wait, you guys still gotta eat, eat the hell out of them too. You, hey, you still both yeah. haven't had the skillet yet. Wait till you guys have the skillet. I'm, I'm waiting for that. I wish you guys would hurry up and get that done because we can New York strips. Because that is like, I mean, I continue to get introduced to like things that they have that are amazing. I told you, you you got Katrina to order the pork. Yeah, and she did the whole like slice the middle of it and put like I forget what she put in the middle of it. Oh, like, well, she cheese, makes it a uh, cheese oh, and stuff. Like, oh yeah, she oh, was, in there. I think bro, I've had that. So bomb. Really, she oh. folds. She makes like a little. She yeah, she cuts it open. Then she puts cheese and ham. Yeah, cheese and ham inside the middle of the the, wow. the pork tenderloin wow. or whatever. Yeah, and then and then she puts something else with it. This she found some crazy recipe and. Served it up to me one night. I was like, No, I, I literally this take them. Bomb. I slice them in half Sounds to make good. them thin. I dip them in uh, egg and then uh, Planko or uh, Panko or whatever. Uh, yeah, gluten free breadcrumbs. Yeah, Panko. And then I fry them. Yeah. What's that called? German. Uh, it's a German. I don't remember what it's called. Schnitzel. Weisel. Oh, no, no. Schnitzel. Is it? Yeah. Wow, you were close. <laughs> you just made up a word. It's called schnitzel. My jibber jabber sometimes pays <laughs> off. <laughs> Sweet. That's weird. Yeah. That's Is so that really close. what it was? Schnitzel. Oh, wow. It's called schnitzel. Doesn't oh, that sound it. like a made up word? It does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like someone just made it. Yeah. yeah I don't what do you want to call this? I don't think I've had a schnitzel before. It's just, it's what I said. It's pork that's uh, fried with breadcrumbs. You know what I had last night was a hush puppy. What's in a hush puppy? Puppies. Stupid. Uh. <laughs> Stop it. Hush puppy. Yeah, I don't isn't know. That, isn't is that, that potato spuds or something? I don't know. It's like deeply fried though. It tastes like it tastes like a it tastes like a gluten ball. That's what it tastes like. I don't know yeah. what a hush puppy. Isn't that that's a southern food, right? Hush puppies are made of cornmeal batter with like garlic powder on your Yeah, powder. like Ooh, I said, like a it? Wow, that yeah, sounds like, like a bomb. Like it's a gluten bowl. bomb, bro. It definitely that is. That sounds delicious. It is though. delicious though. Yeah, we had we had one of the Did you did you like fall asleep afterwards? I mean, I only had one cuz I just wanted to taste it cuz the table ordered it and I'm like, that looks that sounds kind of good. And did it had you like dip this, it in anything or you like that? Uh, you have it comes with a butter. It would just you wipe it on the butter or whatever and then it had like a jalapeno mix inside of it too. Oh god. Yeah, no, it was good. I mean, I could see myself wanting to eat a bunch of them, but I knew better. Like as soon as I bit into it, I'm like, oh, this is like a gluten bomb. I can just <laughs> yeah, tell. Yeah. You know, it's like, I better stop right You know, it's there. funny about Go sleep after you eat it. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. funny about when you pay attention to how you feel after you eat, you stop. Uh, yeah. You stop craving certain foods. Because you know. It's going to ruin your day. I mean, to me, yeah. that's for the audience that's listening, this is the biggest hack to totally. learning to make better food choices. Instead of always attaching your training and your diet to the way you look and, oh, I'm fat. Now I'm lean. Oh, I'm fat. Now I'm lean. Yeah. It's like, and it's all about that. Learning to connect like how my body feels when I eat really healthy mm -hmm. and how does my body feel when I make these other choices and being honest because so many people are not honest with themselves. There's like, yeah, my body totally accepts yeah. ice cream. Oh yeah, yeah. It totally feels good when I eat them French fries. Like you lie to yourself and you say that, but if you really pay attention to everything from your energy, your mood, your sleep that night, water retention, bloat, like all that stuff, you and and you and you just connect to it, and you connect that's all you to it, do. and you connect to it. You'll naturally, and, your body, and then, and you'll naturally want it or not want it. That's right. Yeah. And, and sooner or later, you'll get to a point. That, and to me, this is the point that you're you're trying to get to in your in your health and fitness and nutrition journey, is to becoming 
that aware of it because then it makes it a lot easier. And then it also, there's times, I mean, honestly, when I'm like, oh, fuck it, I'm going, I'm going to be hurting tonight. Like, this, that's is how you, I, this is how I, you- I, I 100% accept it. Yes, you know? this is how you create balance. <laughs> Because you're fully aware. Yeah. You're fully aware of the decisions that you're making. That's all it is. But what happens more often than not is you're at a party, you're at the park, you're doing something with your family, you see a food. And then I know, like, I got four hours left of us being out. If I eat that, it's going to ruin yeah. the rest of the time. I just don't want to eat it. And, and it's not that I can't eat it. I literally don't want to. That's what makes it so balanced. Or like you said, you're like, well, I mean... I'm at my in-law's house. I could take a nap on the couch. So I guess I will. You know, <laughs> it's a, it's a anyway. All right. Today's program giveaway maps aesthetic. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video. The first 24 hours that we drop it, subscribe to this channel and then turn on notifications. If you win maps aesthetic, we'll let you know in the comment section. We're also running a workout program sale this month. We have a beginner strength training program called maps starter. That's 50% off. So if you're trying to get into strength training, this is where you want to start. We also have something called the Starter Bundle, which has MAPS Anabolic. It's a little bit more of an advanced strength training program and MAPS Prime. It's a great combination for muscle building, fat loss, and metabolism boosting. That bundle is also 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Dude, yesterday I did uh, a Thai massage. Have you guys ever done like a Thai? Yeah, oh, were they like I hate Thai you massage, and dude. They, st they stick you your stuff? knee. They stick their knee. Bro, I hate Katrina likes like Thai. Walk I don't on like your Thai back. massage at all. Bro, I, I got in there and- Did you like it? So so they- Don't so, fucking lie. You don't like it. You huh? barely even like massages in the first place. Thai massage is not for you. I, I like the effects. Okay. <laughs> While it's happening, it's like, ugh, right? So I go this in there- This must have been a gift. That's why you're being so nice about it right now. No, Was no, Was it no, a no, gift? No, no. No, I, I've been told that I need to get more massages. I've been told. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> my wife's been trying to get you to get massages for years. Uh, everybody you, told yeah. me I need more massage. But a Thai massage is not the way you get with someone like you. I'll tell you that right now. You don't go to a Thai massage. What do I need? For a guy. Sports massage would be good, but even you have to be Swedish, then sports, and then maybe Thai. Thai is Which like- Which one's sweeter? Where they do this? The this little is, no, no. Here? Swedish is like, <laughs> they put you to sleep, rub you, like soft. So if you're not used yeah. to the hard pressure and oh, stuff I like, like that, one, and yeah. people people don't like that at first, you got to ease. I feel like in. it's a waste of time. They're just they're. Just I mean, it's like if you relax your mind and you fall asleep, it's not a waste. Come on, let's be honest. But mm. yes, physically, you good. need more of a sports That's what deep I, tissue yeah. massage is what you need. Yeah, because I go in there and they have you fill out the the form or whatever, and I put on there um, like, do you want it like firm, very firm? I said very firm. Oh God, tight. And of course they look at me, so like, oh, this. Oh guy. yeah, so they bring the so heat, bro. They send like, in this like, yeah. Were, <laughs> were you sweating? Like tiny, were you sweating? Bro, I got, I had like a, like an adrenaline response. They send in this, <laughs> this like tiny little, this tiny little girl comes in. She's probably a hundred pounds, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And I didn't know this till after because I couldn't see her at first. Yeah. So like, lay face down. So I lay face down, and there's a, you know, they they hold on to the <clears throat> pole or whatever above you, and this fucking this bitch, dude, she is walking on me, but then she'll find a spot. Yeah, yeah. She'll put her he she'll put her foot on me. Yeah. yeah. And I can feel what she's doing. She stands up on one heel yeah. and lifts the other foot. Fuck All that. the pressure. She did this one where my hand was behind my back, so it makes my scapula stick out. Yeah. She put her heel where my scapula is sticking out <laughs> in there. <laughs> and she stood up. Now here's the mm. thing now as a man the, and I'm sure some men. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to. The submit. last thing you don't I'll do. Submit. You want to just no. keep taking it. No. <laughs> what a miserable experience. Hey, so, <laughs> the last thing I'm going to do is be like, "That's too hard." Uh, so I'm just sitting there like. Ugh. So you're just managing the noises coming out of you, right? Because oh. like, <laughs> no, you're not. You, you, you have to let out. There's no way you're not. I'm, I'm just breathing. Yeah. So what they hear is. <gasps> yeah. What they hear is. <gasps> <laughs> You know, yeah. doing one of those things, yeah, and, yeah, I can, yeah. and I'm like, oh, you know. And then I'm, you're tensing up more. No, so I had to be careful because I find myself tensing up, and I'm yeah. like, my butt cheeks are are, are squeezing. I got to relax yeah, those. Yeah, yeah. But she was standing in that, and I thought to myself a couple times, I was like, is she gonna hurt me? Am I gonna like get an actual injury yeah. from this? Yeah. But afterwards, yeah. I mean, I feel I felt it. Yeah, it was I'm, good. I'm not a fry. I'm not I a need fan it. Of time. I'm not mm. a fan of time. I'm gonna go back. Really? Yeah, I am. And you then should, she did. This. You should probably listen to the guy who's married to this the sports fucking mm -hmm. massage therapist that's been doing it for twenty something years. Listen, <laughs> or you could go try and figure it all out nah, on your I'm own. Gonna learn the hard <laughs> way. Then she put her high heels on. <laughs> 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 that's next level. <laughs> what are you talking about? 
not gonna like, tap they, dance they do though back, i mean dude. i swear that sometimes i feel like they're going in there too, bro to hurt she you. put me in and when they see a muscly guy they know they gotta bring i it, think so. that they talk about it afterwards 100 percent they do up, yeah 100 yeah. yeah. hey do. she did like a boston crab on me you know that fucking yes <laughs> what's this that. where they like lift your chin from the back and they're like she pulls his legs like no she bends my knees and she did something with her legs and body where she's my legs are hooked into hers and then she's like moving her body forward and I'm like, I'm going to tap out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like my, my heel, my, my foot's going to touch my head. I don't know if I can do this. Yeah. yeah. I, I had a tie to come to the intense. house for a while and cause, cause Katrina <laughs> likes it, dude. And I'm like, it's, anno it's annoying. To, and the, uh, all the chopping and stuff. I'm like, I want to. No, she didn't do no chopping. A this good, a real good yeah. massage in my opinion. Okay. This is what, I mean, this is how yeah, I fell no in love with Katrina chops. is she will ease you in almost as if you're getting a sweetest massage to kind of relax you. She knows when you relax yeah. and settle in and then she finds those spots and then doesn't go hard right away. She works her way into getting hard. Yeah. And then before you know it, she is deep as fuck. And then you just, you go out. Uh, that's a, when you got a sure. good massage therapist, yeah, that's the she best. knows all the points. That makes sense. She knows how to ease you into relaxation. Then she knows how to go deep on you. And you know, it's a perfect one because you will fall asleep, dude. So you, here you get the release and it's like, like all those hormones Such come out. Such a different like, feeling when they go deep and then you're just like, oh my God, because it, it, you get like a headache and if you're not hydrating enough, like it really like yeah. messes you up the next day. No, and, you, and you have but to- But it's all that toxic and stuff. You, and you out. have to work up to it, right? So like if you've never done one before- I mean, I guess this makes sense. Going, yeah. <laughs> it's like working out, right? Yeah, 100% so like working out. So up. like when I go see a massage therapist, like I tell them, like I used to get massages all the time. I haven't been in this long, so you're gonna have to work me in or ease into me or whatever. So I, I know, I mean, obviously Katrina will tell you this too it's just like with you with training a client if they do it the better job we do of communicating to them the better and a good experienced massage therapist will know like if you communicate it and you say like hey like these are my right intensity so or... i know like yeah like okay my traps are my sensitive areas you guys said you got to go easy on my traps there I'm, I'm sensitive there my hips and my legs you can go to town on my hips and my my low back you got to work into me like i know how to communicate my entire body to a therapist and then a really good one again Will will ease you in, and then if you know it, because you'll go, you'll fall asleep, and then yeah. when you wake up, you're released. That makes sense. Oh man, bro, she was standing on my butt cheek. She was standing on my hamstrings <laughs> yeah. at one point because I'm laying face down. I, I, you know, I can hear because I didn't see she's her splitting right? the gap. Yeah. Oh no, no, no she's not tearing me. Up. She, ah! Hey, that was like if she slipped. Oh, shut up. <laughs> no, she she went around. I could hear her around the front. And I'm like, oh, she gonna like press on my neck, yeah. and then I feel something getting ready to push, and I'm like, oh shit, that's a foot. So I think she was sitting away from me, holding on to something and going like, leveraging like, it. Oh yeah, like, right yeah, into they my have like handles and bars and things. They hold Bro, on to. I was like, "This is brutal." They know all hey, the, they know here's all the best part. You ready for this? There was a sign on the door. I swear to God, there was a sign on the door that they printed, and it said, "Professional massage only." No, and then oh, quotation uh, sexual massage. Wow. wow. They, have they to probably put get that. dudes coming in there being creepy. Man. Well, because I mean, in the defense of the dudes, there's like every other one, every other in. every other one is like that now because it yeah, would yeah, happen. Right. I mean, that's what put Katrina's business out of business was so they made up they passed a law a while back where if you were on a temporary visa, you could legally do this massage and you could massage under the license right. of somebody oh, else. One, yeah. So the hustle became and this was all happened in this this time that Katrina and them owned their their clinics and stuff. The hustle because they used to be a high end place, 150, 200 of the massage, yeah. like real high end sports massage type stuff. And then in comes this, this new law they passed. So you got these people that one therapist hires 20 people on visas yeah. that are like, are making, they're like $10 an hour is huge money. Yeah, there. They're charging 20, 25 so they make bucks. 20 bucks an hour. And then the hustle up on that is like, you get these girls that are willing to do $20 massages yeah. and other things on top of that. And so then they just, rake the money in no no i didn't get it and it put like good they put a lot of good clinics out of business like katrina's they just couldn't they couldn't yeah how do you compete yeah that price point yeah you and and and, and, and actually some massage and and, and like they were straight up katrina's like hey she's like man there's some some of these girls can actually massage pretty good for 20 bucks you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I can't argue with, like, they're getting you're giving you a massage for 20 bucks when ours were charging 170 like it better be light years different for one seventy to twenty, unless you're getting yeah, no, this one was expensive. Yeah. This wasn't a this wasn't one of those. Yeah, you places. probably went to like an. A spa, I went to a legit place. Like a spa yeah, so those places, I think the law says it has to be in an open area. So you know, when you pay twenty bucks and you're getting massaged and it's all one room, yeah, and there's yeah, other yeah. people. Yeah, but you know how they do that, right? I've been in one of those. Like they're they're just curtains. 
So it's one massive room, so they can. Isn't that funny? I know. So it's all ways to manipulate the law. Mm. So I'm still in, and they close curtain. You know, they they do Mm. curtains in the in the big full room. Wow. So I've done them right. I've done like all the all the different massages and shit like that. And some of the like I said, twenty dollar ones are. I'll try that next time. I'll try getting a soft one next time. I'll see. Well, it's not even that. If you just tell them, like, "Hey, ease into me before," and and not a tie. Tie is not for you. Like, not where you're at right now. Like, you would want a. You do want a sports massage. That's where you get the most relief. See, my experience was massage. I used to have a massage therapist, and she was a brilliant at her job. And I remember the the. I remember one specific instance because I was always reluctant. Like, I don't get a massage. Who cares? Whatever. And I was I had tennis elbow really bad. Um, this is when I was doing jujitsu, and it would I have to warm up, and it wasn't going away, and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And she said, let me work on your forearm. And she straight relieved it. And for, okay, for one, so not, she brought in ice in the room. So she had ice, a heating pad. I sat in a chair with my arms, my forearms up on the massage table. For one and a half hours, all she did was work on my forearm. And I mean, she got in there so, it was so painful. It was one of the most painful experiences of my life, seriously. Yeah. But afterwards, that was it. It was gone. It was gone completely. So I now have a connection with... The more it sucks, the better it is. But I think you're saying is right. Oh, I mean, I've actually been asking Katrina for a while. I want her to massage all you guys. I want you guys to experience that because I was not a big massage guy before we met. So I had had my experience of all of them. I'm just kind of like, eh, I'm not really into this. I'm, I'm, I don't even know your wife massage. I was, weird, bro. It's, not, <laughs> it's only weird if you make it weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's not what I mean. Yeah. I don't mean like that. <laughs> I don't mean like yeah, that. Yeah, because it could be weird. It could be weird. Adam's like, well, now you're not. No. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, well, Sal's out now. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah. No, it's weird because you said your wife can read your, like, shit from yeah, your body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm yeah. not trying to get Katrina, but like, yeah. I mean, she she's won't do it unless, Sal, what's from, on your mind or whatever? Yeah. Oh, fuck, no, stop she it. Will, she will add, she, they don't talk to you unless you can engage and talk yeah. to them. But, like, yeah, she'll do it. That, she'll come I mean, home and tell Adam everything. So, Justin. Oh, this is really what's going on with Sal. This is how Justin and Sal feel about you, Adam. I felt it in his, you know. His L5 was speaking to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, so do you know? So do you all know your? We've all had enough of these now. So do you guys have areas on your like you know like your shoulder, your hip, yeah. your back? Like where where are your like total release points? Do you know where um, yours are? Uh, mid like th- like thoracic and uh, kind of scapular. Oh, area. interesting. Mid, do you know where yours back. are? Mid upper yeah, back. Yeah, mid like like trap and like up into my neck and um, oh yeah, it goes all the way up. Like a lot of a lot of it goes up into my my head. Like I get a lot of tension headaches. So you like that move where they go like it's this. Like this. Oh, they, yeah. they reach all the way down your trap. Yeah, and yeah. Sh- like pull yeah, up, yeah, pull yeah, up yeah, there. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Was that called traction? Yeah. In the neck or whatever? <clears throat> yeah. Well, yeah. that and then my hip, my right hip gets a lot of uh, uh, tension there. And it That's my hip. Like, you, can get in, you can get into my hip. My piriformis, yeah. my hips, my IT, all that. Like you get into that and like. It's always my right side, dude. Yeah. I always oh. say, don't touch my feet. I always say that. I uh, hate it. Oh. Uh, it I, I jump off the table. Yeah. It just tickles me. My No, my feet are in my stomach. I don't like. Because I hadn't had that before. Uh, then I had Jolene does. Jirlene. Jirlene does a stomach. I'm like, don't. I let her do it the first time. She has a great massage, but 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 the stomach, like, it messed me up. Like, make you fart? Or what? Well, I just like <laughs> <laughs> no, like it just was weird. And then like later on, I just had like a uh, reaction. Like my stomach was just like like just all out of whack. You know, and, that's like, where you I, whether you store emotion. And the so as and all that's that shit. That's why I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Just, you know, Justin is just like, touch, leave it buried. Touch my shit down Leave there, that dude. shit it's buried. So dark. I'm trying to get it out. Yeah. I it's, would have asked for it if I wanted like, it out. There's like evil sludge in there, dude. Leave <laughs> it in there. Killing. You know, like, let's not let's not move it out <laughs> starts, to the world. <laughs> he starts crying. <laughs> Keep the evil oh, sludge Oh, you fuck at him up. No. <laughs> He's keeping it at the bottom of the well. He knows what's up, dude. I know. Hey. Are you, are you ready for this right here? What are we doing? I've got something for you guys Uh-oh. right now. What do you got? I know Andrew saw it. I sent it to the YouTube. I sent it to YouTube guys. What is it? Oh, shut up, bro. Space shut tourism. Up. Hey, is shut up. here. Is fucking here. Listen to me. This is no longer. How a much ticket? So let's let's break okay. This here, down. Here's the deal. Virgin. If one of us could easily afford, easily afford to go. That doesn't. Can we no, get, we said the general on, public. Yeah, general public, bro. Well, we don't. Are, we're not general public anymore. No. Well, how much is it? Stop okay, trying that's to f- determine. I know it what you're doing me. right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to set you because, both up because because there's robots that also clean, but then there's more no, stipulations. No, 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 no yeah, robot. That, no that brought up. Hey, in, robots in the, that pick up and set things down have been around forever, and that's not the impressive. Vacuum, you know how much saying? is a ticket to go to space? Wait, where, let's hear the number. What? So I have to. So I know when I win here. What? Okay, it's got to be- How many millions of dollars does it, it have to be? Hold on a second. It, it can't be more. Don't show Andrew yet. It and where be, are they going? Are they just going, you know, it's like Space tourism. The, They're in space, um, bro. That's all they have to do no, is space. Hold on a second. Did you say space or the moon? You said space, yeah, I think right? Yeah, it's the moon. Or maybe you said the moon. Space, space bro. Sure that's how you said the moon. the moon. I told you they had Andrew, a thing. did he say the moon I said or they have a thing that they're building that's supposed to go around the moon. Didn't he say going to the moon? Yep. 
I mean, if you go to the moon, you're going to space. Yeah. Uh, oh, so? so it's, it's well, space. Yeah, but like yeah, but outside of our atmosphere. Difference. So wow. if you're just outside of wow. our atmosphere. I knew you guys would. I knew you guys. You're, I knew you're a guys satellite. Still not, <laughs> okay. right? Yeah. Oh, I'm, Bro, I'm, it's like, literally the title is space tourism okay. is here for the general population. How much that does it is cost? 200K ticket, which is not God. that crazy. Woo! Like I, like I don't try, hey, I don't try to flex right now. Two hundred k is no, not okay. That's not a problem. Two hundred k. Name one ticket costs you two hundred grand to go anywhere in the, in the world. I mean, first class across the country is not. Doug, Doug's first class ticket is probably fucking pretty goddamn close to that. Two hundred grand? No, probably forty for one. Yes, dog. Person? Yes. Forty thousand dollars? Yes, bro. First really? class tickets around the world is not cheap. Wait a minute. Look up first class ticket from here to Tokyo and back. Yeah, it's probably like. Like 40 20, grand. 000, one way, like 20,000 20, back. It's yeah. 40 grand? Yeah, Bro. I think you're right. Okay, my point is that is not that far off, okay? Now, hold on. Make it 20, 40, doesn't matter. It's not that far off. Oh, you're wrong, bro. It's $450,000. No, it was 200K where I looked. What, what, you go, <laughs> well, I don't know which one he pulled up. I'll pull you went up the, on I have No, I have the two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it on Expedia. You were basically yeah. half a million. This is a Virgin Galactic site. So yeah. it's 150 grand. Maybe that's where you saw 200K. That's the initial deposit. Yeah. Oh, so the pause. And then no, 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 the no, final balance after that is three hundred. Plus, by the way, you don't go anywhere. You literally go up to space but and come back. They've been saying this. Stop okay, it. So the initial tickets that were pre-sold were priced at two hundred k each. Pre-sale, a special discount. Stop it, you guys. <laughs> the point is, it's not that. And you're, this is the very first one. So I'll tell you right now, it's when, gonna. They'll get. It'll, it'll be fifty percent less before your fucking robots are washing dishes in your home. Okay, when is this? And, launch? and here's the deal. What's well, the I bet you, I bet you, one of our friends What's the does a space tour before one of our friends owns a fucking robot that's yeah. cleaning their dishes. Uh, you want to continue this bet? Uh, yeah, right. What was the bet, by the way? Well, well yeah, I don't know. Space tourism. No, 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 no. What was the? Did we? Bet I said anything? that they would have. Oh no, we'd have money. What's we don't have money. just bragging rights. Yeah, it's bragging rights. But, that's way. That's worth more money, anyways. I don't even want your money. I'm saying, like, fuck, what do I need your money? You don't want to admit yeah. Adam was I'd rather, right. I'd rather talk. Yeah, you Listen, have to say I'm right. This it's isn't. Like, if you win, I mean, I'll wear a close. T-shirt. I mean, this is definitely on. Yeah, on the horizon. That's close, but I, I, I think a robot that washes your dishes is just going to be closer, especially with AI. Okay, so here's I mean, an easy it's... way. Okay, somebody, one, one of us, or somebody close to us. Okay, by proxy, friend or or whatever. Okay, acquaintance, friend of ours, will do a space tour before someone owns a robot that washes dishes in the house. How much more of a clear? Fucking win is that? Did you? Who do you know you that's can, doing this? You right can now? book as early as next I don't know anybody. One yet. to two years, but I guarantee we will. One, know to, two one years. to two years. Yeah. Now, what is it? Oh, hold on, this just out of curiosity. Okay, so they what announced it? it. This is just like when they do a demo, yeah, right, live, and then there's like, hey, we have this all ready to go, but yeah. it's not ready for. What, two how, years. So what is it? Does it go up to space and comes back down to Earth? That's it. It's a good question. That's expensive for that. Yeah. I mean, it's the first. It's the first one, dude. Stupid. And you well, knew that, and they're and they're gonna get a month. They're gonna get coming. what they want. It gives you hope. And there's gonna be a, a line of people that will pay that just to be the yeah. first people to do it. Look at this. You'll you'll enjoy a future astronaut community membership. Okay, now pull up Tesla's robot just for um, yeah. comparison. It ain't here. no four hundred grand. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it, stop. Stop. Right. Well, we I'll, just have to and, see. And let me tell you, see where there, has the been, there has been robots that have been picking up boxes and doing shit like that forever. I, <laughs> when we talked to a student that was in an AI class, his his comment yeah, was, "Yeah, he wasn't a good student." What? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> he, he, he's, 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 he's not on the. He doesn't he's, know all he was the an idiot. insider he was a good student. He was a good student. I know more. Yeah. He's a good. He said that the 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 ability, the hardest part, is to read. Spot what, the dishes. Yeah, if the dishes are clean. AI is going to do it. Huh? AI will do it. I mean, I don't disagree that it won't. I just agree, believe that this would happen first. No, this is good, bro. This is close. You know, this, this is like cool. oh the, the, the Okay, yeah, so again, yeah. two on. years from now, how much will the Tesla robot cost? Under twenty thousand dollars. That doesn't yeah. mean. What's your point? Under twenty. What's your it's, point. Uh, robots. Let, let's, gonna, we'll read about what it can do. Yeah. Just so Adam can like naysay it first. Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, watch the robot takes you to space too. It can, Boom. It can walk up and say <laughs> happy birthday to you. It can carry your hey. blankets to the laundry. I mean, they had it Rocky Four fucking, already. I don't understand like why we're even arguing. Remember that the robot Rocky. Mm -hmm. Hey, Polly. Hey, the, that was so the, hey, the true test will be this. Listen, if one of our friends get a fucking house robot that does the dishes before, or one of you guys gets it, you win. I mean, uh, we might have to buy one. We well. will. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we'll go in on it together. It just interacts with the physical world and it performs. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, cool. The idea is to have re replace humans for repetitive and boring tasks, performing unsafe tasks. So it's going to have good balance, navigation, perception, interaction with the physical world. Yeah. Does that it's count? A number of all kinds of things. It has well, to do the dishes. dishes. Is repetitive. Has to do I mean, dishes. once we see it do it, then 
Okay. It could count. Well, All again, right. it's there, here's, but it hasn't here's actually the proven itself. Here's so the we're in the same uh, yes. boat here. Yeah. If we win, you got to wear a shirt that says Sal and Justin were right. <laughs> if you will win, I'll wear a shirt that says Adam was right. Yeah, well, Adam was right. Well, Adam, I, or we could, or we could buy each other, the, I'll buy you a ticket on the fucking flight over to- You still owe me a that's car. That's too crazy. <laughs> Doesn't spend money like that. It's frivolous. <laughs> What are you going to see, dude? It's that not gonna be, actually hey, round? It's not going to be 200K. <laughs> like it's, like, it's not going to be 200K for after a year appeal, into it, it being out, it won't even be 200K. You I should think, know that. People you are just going to go on there and they're going to be like, yay, they're going to vomit. I mean, yeah. they're not even going to be. Russell like, would be an idiot it. to sell it for the uh, whatever, like uh, 200 right now when everybody's willing to pay 400. Pay, charge the top dollar until it's like happening all dude, the time. You know what? You just mentioned something. What are, they, what are the flat earthers going to do? Oh, they're going to blow, blow their, their mind. Explode. They're that the, or, hey, they're the first ones paying 400 k <laughs> They don't have that kind of money. They're not that smart. <laughs> they're they're going to be like, oh, it's yeah. it's all fake up here. Yeah. It's CGI in the windows. I, you you Bro, hey, there's have rich, to like fund one of them There's to some go rich up. flat earthers. Kyrie Irvin was a, a flat earther guy. Oh, he needs to go. Yeah. He's yeah we athlete. need to get him a ticket. Yeah. That's not the same. <laughs> He's rich because he plays. Yeah. I was, there's yeah. a bunch of other rich people that think stupid shit, dude. Exactly. Doesn't mean you're smart if you're rich. Yeah. Anyway. I don't know, dude. I had so many DMs. I was like, bro. I'll, I'll bring it up and don't worry these guys are going to find oh. a way to fucking backpedal <laughs> dude for you want, sure yeah, well, space yeah. tourism here hey, that's not enough I mean it's, a, it's an announcement that's, that's cool can we, can but we at least nothing can we, really let's yet. make this clear so we yeah. don't have to keep bringing this up every single time a robot that does dishes in anybody, either of our houses or any of our friends houses or Wait, one of our adding to this well, what, it, what? it has to be what? a friend of ours yeah. Acquaintance, okay, can't or be like, a fucking article of some random street. Or like a, somebody we kind of know, like, yeah, not, not like a friend, yeah, okay. Or okay. someone will do a space tour. I, why are you change the bet? The bet was okay, widely available because you already lost the other bet. There's already a space <laughs> tour happening. It's that's already not, happening, so you not, lost that one. That's not widely available. It's wildly available. If you have 200k, you could do it. Plenty of people well, we got have 200k years still. That's 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 what yeah. I said. All right, fine. Okay. One of somebody we know either flies on Bro, how many people drive 200k cars around? Yeah. Okay? Yeah, There's yeah. people that can find a way to yeah. get a ticket to do space tour. That's not that outrageous. All if it right. was a million dollars and I'd tell you guys like, okay, All right. that's out of reach for most people. But a 200k ticket is not out of reach. It's expensive. Well, yeah. You know, so it's first class, but hell of people fly first class every day. What's that flight going to be like? So do they just, is it, it's not, obviously it's not going straight up. It's just flying higher and higher until you're out of the atmosphere. It's I couldn't not find like going. exactly what is happening, but I do see that the first one is scheduled for the end of this month. Yeah, it's going to be like literally end just of this outside month. of the yeah, atmosphere. That's so all. right above So just it. so you guys are okay, clear, end of space. this month, you lose. Okay, you lose. Because by the end of it, unless your dishes get washed, but in the next 30 days, you lose the bet. So I'm trying to extend the bet for you that, hey- when will one of us have a friend that has Is that the, the first robot? light goes out? Yeah. 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 Wow. All right. Wow. Yeah, okay. That's cool. Get yeah, your yeah, t-shirts. Okay. Let's <laughs> see what happens. Get your fucking hey, t-shirts. Since we're talking about <laughs> since we're talking about stupid stuff. You guys hear? <laughs> hey, hey, listen to what it's not stupid. That's cool. It's so dumb. So listen to what uh, Kim Jong Un just did. Oh God, what did Ordered, he do now? Bro, he's this is this what's is his, what's his latest record? When you're cr like, God, does he have, does he have all the Guinness World Records, dude? He has is, to. But listen to what point. he just did. Ready for this? Yeah, it's here. He just, he just uh, so many people in North Korea are committing suicide. Okay, because there, there's oh committing now. Why are they committing suicide? I heard about this. no food. It's great. Whatever. So he has now he's ordered them to stop killing themselves by punishment. I order you of execution. <laughs> Really? Nice. That's not a real thing. Is if it you, real? She's like, I want to kill you. If you, you try to kill, kill yourself, yourself, I'll kill you. <laughs> that's the that's literally what he that's did. That's a real that's a real thing? Yeah. Dude. Oh, that's wow. hilarious. Yeah, because it's called like either counting it as leadership. Uh, it's yeah. an act <laughs> it's an act of treason <laughs> against socialism. It's like one of those yeah. uh you know <laughs> like the, the it's eagle like a the eagle yeah, poster the, behind yeah, like a poster, yeah. like one of those posters. Yeah. If you try to kill yourself, I will murder you. I will kill you if you try he literally said that. So need to make a meme like that. That's so crazy. You remember those remember when those were really popular mm -hmm. those poster the fake ones yeah just the posters that yeah. would have like an eagle on it and say like leadership and it had like yeah. a hang in there you yeah know, it's got like some <laughs> the like cat animal or the something. cat yeah. hanging from the tree yeah, yeah. yeah. hey so bring those back so check this out right so this is interesting a little bit of a, a of a left turn here but i've been uh kind of speculating on something and i'm i'm noticing some stuff in kind of mainstream um information and what's getting popular and it seems to be surfacing more and more. And now I'm looking at data that's kind of supporting what, you know, I, I was kind of suspecting. And I think a lot of people have been speculating on this. And then I've listened to some podcasts by some spiritual leaders who are kind of commenting on this. So a while ago, I don't know if I said this on the show, but a while ago, I, I think I talked to you guys and I said, it seems like religion and structure and that kind of stuff seems to be making a, a, a comeback. 
especially with younger men. Mm. Seems to be making comeback. You've been saying that for a while. I have. It's happening. Are and you sure, or are you just red pill? No, no. So like all the content. No, 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 no. <laughs> you're taking it. No, it's <laughs> happening. It's happening, and it's not like young men are not going to like the local Christian church that plays music and you sing. They're going to the more structured versions, like Latin Mass, Orthodox Christianity, like the more structured. So, so I'd some, love your speculation. Yeah, I do have some, I have some theories on that, and the irony of it is that. And you've actually said this before on the podcast that it's, uh, and this is in in our nature uh, to as young men as a teenager to rebel against mm -hmm. the the norm, yes, and the right. norm has become so radical on the left and anti God and all that shit so much mm -hmm. that now the most you know rebellious thing you could do is go to a very strict church. Yeah. So yeah. I actually think that's what we're seeing is a, a like a rebellious side to this movement which is kind of ironic that it's leading to people to yeah. God. <laughs> I, I yeah, I think too it's just like the perception of our world it looks so chaotic because of all yes. the different um uh, media feeds that we see and like what kind of like uh, narratives they're trying to push for all kinds of different directions and it's like you know, like people just, I think there's this, this drive to just like make sense and order of things. And so to go into something that's a little more, you know, even more structured than they've experienced before. You literally hit the nail on the head in a world that seems completely devoid of structure and discipline where you can get anything, yeah. anytime you Everything's want. Everything's relative. Like you yes. can make an argument <laughs> that, yeah, for your that people, <clears throat> decision. Especially young men, especially young men crave more structure and discipline. So I listened to a podcast with Bishop Barron and they're talking about this data. And he says, one of the mistakes that the church did is they reformed themselves to make themselves easier. And he goes, young men don't want easy. They want hard. Yep. They want structure. And he goes, and it actually bit us in the ass and people started leaving. And so now they're coming back, but they're going to these more orthodox forms. And it makes sense. If Again, if you look at the world, there's no structure around anything. You do what you want. You get what you want. And a lot of people feel sad, uh, discontent. They feel like they're just kind of floating in the wind. And so they, they want that. They're looking for structure. So things like stoicism have exploded. Yeah. They talked about on this podcast, these hardcore discipline fitness influencers who are exploding as leaders. Uh, like, what are they saying? Like, work out every morning, eat like that. Like, yeah, it's and, like disciplines. P yes. <clears throat> so it's this interesting movement that's starting to happen where people are craving because everybody feels this anxious, like, what the hell? I need some structure. I need some discipline. I need something to help order things. And um, it's these more orthodox I think uh, we're also traditions. seeing a rise in that, in that side of things, too finally speaking out because it's gotten so extreme too. So yeah. I think that a lot of yeah. this was already kind of happening under the surface a little bit anyways. Mm -hmm. But I think that group tends to be this kind of silent majority a lot of the times. And I think that there's more and more people that are, this is like, that are finally going like, okay, this is getting too ridiculous or this is now starting to creep into my life. I mean, I, I find that I identify with this group of people. I don't, feel like I really have a dog in this fight that much. But then once this starts bleeding into where it starts to affect my kid at school yep. and, and it's changed that shit, like, okay, now we have a problem. Yep. Like yep. now you're going to get my attention. Now I'm going to be more vocal about it only because it's fucking with me. Cause I really don't give a shit what everybody else does. If you got yeah. what, what to each their own right. and how they yeah. want to live their life. Yeah, just don't I'm, hurt me. Don't steal. Yeah, 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 shit, exactly. Yeah. Don't just don't, don't impede in my life. You know what I'm saying? That's all I care about. And so now that it, you there, it's starting to encroach on, I think, mothers and fathers and, and people that now I feel like they're having. So I think that's kind of what a combination of everything you're talking about is what we're Well, feeling. that's part of it. The other part of it is young men are dating less. They're pursuing less risky challenges. People think that's a good thing, but it's actually in part of our nature. Like the less risky challenges, like going out and talking to girls versus going online and oh, watching yeah. porn or whatever, yeah. playing video games, which simulate challenge, uh, but it's not real challenge like in the real world. So young men are, doing these things and they're fucking sad and they're depressed and they need challenge and meaning, especially young men need to feel like they're going towards something. That's why they're attracted. This is why really dysfunctional young men can often be radicalized in particular areas of prime targets. So it, it kind of provides um, some of that, some of that structure. You need an outlet. For yeah. That. And they're like, Oh my God, this, this feels right. Like I feel um, like I have a purpose. I have some meaning. Um, and these are age old uh, practices. It's really interesting to watch kind of what's going on right now. It's really well, I think you you also, I mean, we kind of off air, we've we've joked about this. Like, and I don't know where I feel and where I stand exactly on this is 
there's a huge movement right now, especially in the fitness space to, you know, uh, attract, you know, beta men and help them become more alpha. Yeah. And so there's a lot of these, like, it feels a bit exploitive, doesn't it? It does. That's, feel why, I know, that's why I get, so it's like, it. cause I, cause I feel called to, to help that group of men also, you know, like mm -hmm. I feel like I never anticipated this podcast or this, what we've done to kind of morph into that. Like, of course it was about sharing our, our fitness knowledge and helping people become healthier, fitter people along that way. I've felt like there, we've had this movement of, you know, fatherhood being, uh, leaders for me, other young men that are growing up. And so I feel passionately drawn in that direction as maybe some of these other people do, but I feel like it's exploiting it to, to try and monetize it by, having these groups where, yeah. you know, like, you know, bring your, your son and your father and let's do this boot camp thing. And let me fucking make you get up at four o'clock in the morning, spray water in your face and run in mud. Yeah. And like, now you're an alpha, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. I don't know. It's and, more and I don't want to be, I don't want to come off either. By the way, if I'm offending somebody who's done that and I, I'm not trying to be judgy about it, I'm not sure if that it's like, it's, it sits with me kind of like the mastermind stuff does. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I know some people maybe have well, when you see gone a market, through a mastermind and had lots of success. When you see a market and you see a market demand, then there's always going to be people that are going to come in and they're going to try to take advantage. And that's what I think a lot of that is. Is so what? Okay, so what I'm trying to get a read on, that's why I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to articul articulate right now is like, is it take advantage or is it serving a need? Right. Like, that's is, what I'm, is that's there what, a void there? The verdict not is, getting is not out for me yet. Here's what I think. I think the, uh, the ancients understood human behavior way better than we do. We know science, we understand the material world, but human behavior, they understand, they understood very, very well. I think if you're going to go and try to become more quote unquote manly, then you would want to go somewhere where they're practicing these things that have been done for thousands of years that have, that are tried and true. What you don't want to do is go to some modern, become a guy, become a man. What does that look like? Here's how you pick up on chicks. Here you go. Uh, go do something hard, and that's that's the you know all we got to do. And I don't know. I feel like the 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 playbook is out there. I don't think it's as easy as going on a weekend. I think people who talk about it the right way, like Jordan Peterson, does a very good job. And what does he do? He breaks down this this wisdom and he explains it in ways that are understandable. But the wisdom's out there. There's nothing new. It's not new. It's all stuff that we've. Did you have you guys seen the data by the way on fathers? And versus mothers who practice uh, spiritual practice and what it does to the kids. Oh yeah, the the likelihood that if a father practices, the likelihood of the child is like crazy exponentially high. higher. Yeah, like mm -hmm. eighty to ten or something yeah. crazy like that. I thought I yeah, saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, is it that versus it's, the mother? It's something yep. like that, right? Yeah. So it's the the fathers have the biggest influence uh, over the kids yeah, and what they sense. practice uh, versus. The I mean, mother. I think that's just if you're the leader of the house in that sense, right? I mean, yeah. that's kind of what what it ends up being. Interesting. Right? Yeah, it's interesting. Anyway, so. Uh, so this is kind of crazy. I just read this the other day. Remember how we talked about that 14 year old that got a job at, um, or was it, uh, SpaceX? Yeah. Oh, yeah they graduated. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We speculated so on somebody if he's just or not. tested with the highest IQ ever, ever beating Einstein and uh, Stephen Hawking. What? Yeah. What? An 11 year old. What? Just tested with the high. It's a girl. It's an Iranian uh, Iranian girl. She just scored the highest uh, IQ ever. Wow. 162 points. That's two points ahead of Einstein. At 11 years old? Yeah. So this is the Mensa IQ test. Um, so it's done within a specific time. Have you ever done any of these before? I've never done any of these before. I did an IQ test a while ago. I don't remember what who I Who was it? That, oh, it was our buddy Chris who was talking about like some of these, like, is it one of those tests that are, it's based more on logic than it is like stuff that you would have to study or learn in school? Isn't that what? Well? I and, think so. Which makes sense why an 11 year old could do it. Because if you didn't study- you know, trick. Yeah, by the time I, never took, I never took an IQ test. So I don't know what that entails. Yeah, I think it has to do. It's it, it's your stu the person's ability I'm to understand it's gonna the tell meanings me I'm dumb. of. That would of be totally fucking <laughs> say what? I'm afraid it's going to tell me I'm dumb. Would no, that be horrible? Who cares? Well, they, you already you know. know I mean, motivate me. I already, <laughs> you are who you are. Right? You know, doesn't mean anything. Hey, you know. Okay, so let's just play this out in your head a little bit here. Like, if you do if, it and it comes back, yeah. Like, if you took it, and, disabled. So do you know that? <laughs> oh. so, so I'm trying to get Katrina to do it at ancestry.com. Did I tell you guys this yet? You so, are? Yeah, and Why? she won't do it. She refused to do it because she's afraid. She's afraid of, of what? Because she, she, I mean, her and I both kind of have, you know, you, you know, me, she would think that I have a little bit of a rough, uh, rougher upbringing than she did, but she didn't have an, an easy rough uh, upbringing herself either. Like, So what is she afraid of? She's going to see a bunch of people that are, she's related yeah, to? Yeah, or she thinks that maybe she has a different dad. Or oh. Different, oh, yeah. So there's like, so what, she like refuses. What if you guys are third cousins? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Stop. Oh, We're dude. so similar. Oh, so, shit. Uh, Did I tell you when I was in Iceland, that was a thing? I know. 
They yeah. actually had to test. People they have to sure. have like an app that everybody so signs many people up are for. Connected. Yeah, because it's like it's too close proximity. Yeah. Like everybody's lived there, and it's like inevitably, like a cousin of yours or whatever you don't know, uh, you might interact with and end up dating. So yeah, they, we got into it about that. it because I, I'm like, she's like, I don't care, I don't want to know. And I'm like, I don't either. It's for my son. It's like for our family tree going mm -hmm. forward. I'm like. I want to be able to. You know, she could put a fake name in it so that it won't alert anybody to her if she's afraid of people following, uh, finding her. Yeah, but then what is it? And the whole idea is to find the the lineage. You'll still find it. It'll I don't want to do you. it because I don't want the the one doctor to be my dad. You know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> that guy in like Michigan or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, I, I told her, listen, honey. I said I have. I'm rolling the dice the same way you are. We might find out I have a different dad, different every, like I have no idea. I don't either. think like, it tells you if your dad, I don't think it'll tell you unless your dad has also done the test. It's just, it's not going to connect the heritage, right? Yeah. Well, like, yeah, but I mean, if, it, oh, if, if, if it, your it, real dad connected, did the test then it might connect you. Yeah. Or yeah. if like it leaps, like, uh, you know, you see you're connected to a, a different dad's dad's dad. Yeah, 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 so yeah, all yeah. it has to be, I mean, it can easily <laughs> point yeah. you in a different, like, wait a second. Yeah. I didn't know this guy was related to me. How's that that's possible? True. Right. So, hmm. I mean, that's what she's just worried about. And I'm like, I, I don't care for my son. I want to, I want to be able to tell them. I tell, I tell her we're generational characters. That's who we are in our family. Yeah. Like we're changing the family tree. So I want it for, or not for me. I want it for our son Moving and forward. our son's son yeah. and their son. Like it, it would be, it would be interesting. I am curious about it. I thought about doing that, but uh, it's just like, I don't know. Like, what are you going to do? Like, you're not going to get all the specific medical information, which actually, is, I think would be better. No, so you could do it. So this is what we did. And you, you can the, actually get that. Yeah, can so, you? Yes. Yeah, so oh, well, you do, so Ancestry.com does this. We were looking at Nathaniel's. So Larry's son did his. And it's, it's already fascinating enough to know, like, where he's 30% this. But but then it tells you, like, the percentage More of, like, of this, that, yeah, that, of yeah. all the different yeah, uh, genetic heart conditions, diseases, genetic diseases. Yes. That we worried about? Okay. So, so that can, was what made me really go, like, man, it's worth it for those things. Okay. Yeah, so you can also take another step further. You could take the data and, and bring it to a company that specifically does that. That's what we did. Mm. So the reason why we did it is because my son... You know, he's get these like he gets these random skin issues. We're trying to figure out what's going on. And so we wanted to see if he had the, I think it's called the MTHFR gene. Maybe Doug, maybe uh Andrew can look this up. MTFRH. Doug Jr. I don't remember what it was, but yeah. <laughs> but this this particular uh I guess gene marker means that you potentially could get rid of uh toxins slower than the average person. Hmm. So you could have buildups of things like um, mold faster or other toxins. So you have to like be careful of your liver. And there's a whole nother, like it's basically something to take consideration. Well, Jessica and I both have it, which means for sure my son has it. Hmm. Now I seem to get rid of shit faster than Jessica. So it's not a guarantee, but it's interesting. So it would mean you get rid of caffeine slower. It means you, you know, you have to be careful with certain chemicals. I don't know what it's called. MTHR. Yeah, you're right. MTHFR. Pretty much decreased ability to uh, detoxify. Yeah. yeah. So lame that you can remember stuff like that. Why is it lame? <laughs> it's, it's, it's very specifically it's, guided, though. That's yeah, it. That's, I can't remember it's anything. It's like laser. Yeah, it's, uh, I a lot of things I'm, I'm envious of or jealous of. That makes me yeah, so Yeah, medical, fitness. Gives you such nutrition. a leg up, dude. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's such a leg up. Bro, it's, 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 a, it's not. That's it, why other stuff in your life is supposed to be hard, bro, because you get that huge advantage. It's, it's there, a huge advantage. It, it's not like it comes without a cost. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I don't feel sorry for you. Heavy. So here's Rock a, on my back. Oh, so here it is. Look at this. See, I'm connected to so many different health conditions. Hashimoto's, hypothyroidism, blood clots. <laughs> Just what someone like you needs, Infertility, like, Alzheimer's, <laughs> depression. Hypochondriac already. Okay, dude. but here's the deal. Okay, so so here, trip off this. This is how, uh, I mean, this is so serendipitous. <laughs> so you may, what, what this means is that your body has trouble methylating. The methylation process is important for detoxif uh, detoxification and other processes in the body. So if you have this gene, then you want to supplement with things that are what are called methyl donors or help your body methylate. You know what one of the best? You guys remember Dr. C? Creatine? Yeah. Creatine. Yeah. The best thing you can take possible if you have an issue with That's methylation cool. yeah. is creatine. Another really? great benefit of I'm creatine. Ready for this? Wow. I've been supplementing with creatine every day since I was 16. Every day. I almost never take a day Just, off. Yeah. You didn't even realize you were doing yourself. Yeah, and this may be why I don't suffer for some of the other stuff that other people with this, because I've always been taking creatine. Wow. Huh. 
Crazy, wow, right? Yeah, that is crazy. All because I was insecure about my body. <laughs> <laughs> it served me so well. Sometimes. Sometimes. Forget all the torture and all the other stuff. I did it right. <laughs> Something right, dude. <laughs> but my skin condition's okay. Gosh, speaking of skin, Adam, <laughs> yeah. uh, how, uh, so you use Caldera Labs products more than we do. I just use Religiously. the oil. Religiously. He just uses the oil. You use the all oil. their stuff. So uh, actually, you know what? I, I finally started using the eye cream right now. So I'm using the eye cream. I ne I wasn't doing this. So I have like the eye cream. The only thing that I do, what do I, I don't use? No, I use, um, I feel like there's a product that I'm not what using. Do you, okay, how does the eye cream work? You just put it on before you go to bed? Yeah, I just put it, no, underneath my, I, you know what's where yeah, I'm you bad? you use soap too, right? The, this, yeah, soap, bar soap is bar soap, the best yeah. bar soap I've ever had. I started had. using so that. So I'm like, that's. Is it, is it foam up like he said? Yeah. Like thick? Like it's just, a, yeah, it's like a foamy layer. Wow. Yeah, you barely, you, you know nice. how like some soap you're like, you yeah, have to like yeah, scrub and yeah. then you get like a little bit of a lather. Like you just one time it's like lather. It's just, wow. Yeah, foamed. Yeah. Wow. It's so, like a, it's like a nitro. Yeah. Is it like those oh, kind yeah. of bubbles? I mean, it, and Hey, I'm like, my son was showering with me after we were outside playing. So that's what we just two showered. It's so nice that like, you know, try, trying to uh, wash a, a young toddler with a bar of soap. Well, it's like, <laughs> yeah, you only right. get like a split second. Yes, <laughs> dude. It's so hard. But with that, yeah. so rad. I yeah. lather up and then it's all over and it's like, yeah. I mean, I could get, actually get it's them. It's like trying to catch, what do they catch a grease pig? Like, yeah, you're right. You're trying to get a hold of your kid when they're you wet. Don't, you don't say, those are like it's weird elusive. things you would not think yeah. of until yeah. you're a dad and you're in that situation. It's like just every dad could think of that right now. Yeah, remember trying to lather your son up with a bar of soap? Like, <laughs> it's like so impossible. Funny. nearly impossible so to do that. So you use the soap, the eye cream, soap, the oil. I, the eye cream I just started, the serum, and then I always forget the name of the, what's the, the regular topical this one the the cream that i like the most which i use really like, yeah but i use every day really every every single day i i use it when i get out of the shower and then sometimes at night do you put it uh, anything anywhere else or just your face and head oh i put on my psoriasis so I'll like you'll see every once in a while i don't you gotta have seen me before, oh i see you while you're on, talking you'll uh, like if my if i'm itching my psoriasis i see oh what I'll, is it the oil that you that you put it on yeah just the serum and the serum, like, it totally keeps it from... So part of what makes psoriasis a pain in the ass is it gets dry and itchy. Mm. And so most of the creams that they give you have are like a steroid, petroleum oil type of mm -hmm. like uh, mixture that you put on there. And so this is an all natural version of keeping my my skin moisturized or uh, like moisture or whatever yeah, on it. Yeah. So yeah. when it gets dry and itchy like that, I'll just reach over, I'll put a drop on it. And then, and then it, and it actually... Cleans it up better than even the stupid psoriasis creams and oils that they. You know make what the for. steroids, the the steroids that people use on their skin. Oh yeah, I do. I use everything. It's now. the base layer. That's what it's called. So you know what's what? Uh, I don't remember where I was going to go. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. It happened. It happens. You, got, you, got, you got distracted thinking about my beautiful, <laughs> oh, beautiful skin. That's so it cool. happened. So cool. Yeah. You so, use it too, though, don't you? Yeah. Oh, that's or what you're I was just not say. as religious. That's what I'm saying. The steroid creams. When people use steroid creams on things like psoriasis or eczema. And it controls it over time. They need stronger and more. Yeah, it adapts. Things. And then when you go off of them, have you seen what happens? Yeah, it gets way worse. You get a I've rebound gone through it. What do you mean? I've you get a rebound. So I saw. I know somebody. I don't want to say who they were. I know somebody who it stopped working. So she's like, I'm just going to stop taking the stuff and then let my body adapt. For it was like a 30 day process, and she put, took pictures. I felt so bad. Her skin. Mm, like it spread. came out. Oh my god! So she well, looked like my, she was. My, I so she looked like she had poison. I went everywhere. through the oh, I did brutal. the steroid shots for a while because they were so effective. Like they convinced me like years ago to to try the steroid shot, and it actually was like magical. They I took the shot, and every day for like the next five days, it, my psoriasis shrunk, 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 and then almost almost looked like it went away. Wow! And I was like, whoa! But then over you know about three three months or so, it would start to come back again, and then I did the steroid shot again, and then I realized like, oh my god, I'm just it's a, it was still getting worse. I'm like, I better stop this. And so I stopped it. And then now it's like worse than it's ever been. And that was uh, years ago when, when that was going on. But yeah, I mean, it, it works. It's, it reminds me of like, uh, you know, cortisone shots. Yeah. It work Like it's so like you yeah. get hooked on it because it works like instantly. And you're like, oh shit, this is how it works. And then you realize, I oh, your body figures, figures it out. She went off everything and her skin just lit up. And she had to wait and go through this whole 30 day or something process of her skin. She's like, couldn't move. Everything itched. Oh, it was terrible. It was terrible. Yeah. See these pictures. So yeah, no, I'm, really. I'm, I'm, I actually, what I, the last thing that I need to do is because even Caldera, as amazing as it is for my psoriasis, so that it's still a band aid for what, it, like the root cause. Root yeah. cause has got to be something related to my gut. I still got to get the stool thing with Cabral and go through that process and try and eliminate. I've never done like a carnivore straight water diet to like eliminate mm -hmm. to nothing, and I'm 
been toying around with maybe potentially to first i'm gonna go to him and see if he can tell me specific things and if not then i need to go on a run for like just see what happens yeah i just need a worst just, case scenario you go back you know yeah no totally uh shout out today so i got um jp sears i think that mm. uh it's been a long time since we brought him up and you know <laughs> that guy's uh, yeah, content great. is just so good man he's such as a smart funny dude and i just i think the other day he had some clip that I was laughing about, and I hadn't checked to see how. Like, dude, he's grown to almost a, a million followers. He's, he's a great. Million. He's amazing. Yeah. Did you guys so. know he's a check? He's a he's a check. Yeah. 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 No. No. Very. Very. People know this about JP. He's a really good fitness guy. Yeah. Like yeah, really. He good knows fitness. his stuff. He's yeah. really smart. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that, I think that's what makes his content so good and funny is because he has a very intelligent mm -hmm. way of approaching like really tough yeah, conversations. Yeah. Satire is always like totally very on point. very good. Oh, his his handle is a uh, awaken with JP. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Hey, look, if you eat a high protein diet, you might benefit from taking the right kind of digestive enzymes. They help break down the protein into amino acids. They help with things like bloat, digestion, energy. Anyway, there's a company we work with called Masszymes, and they make digestive enzymes for people who are fitness minded. So check this out. This month only, get a free bottle of their naturally derived digestive enzymes. So they're literally going to hook you up with a free bottle. While supplies last, all you got to do is pay for shipping. Go check it out. Go to masszymes.com. That's M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S.com forward slash mind pump free. And then there's a code mind pump 10 for a discount. But again, you get a free bottle of digestive enzymes. All you got to do is pay shipping. All right, back to the show. First question is from Luzin Katie. Why am I so sore sometimes and not others, even with a comparable workout? Yeah, this... This is a mystery, okay? Um, we know there's certain things connected to soreness. So if you haven't done an exercise for a while, that will increase soreness. If you haven't exercised at all, that'll increase soreness. Novel stimulus. Lack of sleep, um, you know, having your fatty acid profile be off so it's more pro-inflammatory. Some exercises tend to cause more soreness. These are the ones that tend to load you in a stretched position. For example... You're more likely to have sore hamstrings from, let's say, a, a stiff-legged deadlift than you would be from leg curls. So it's it's hard to say, but one thing is for sure that soreness does not indicate you that you had a successful workout. It can tell you you did too much, like you went too hard. If you're really sore and you're sore for longer than a day or two, you probably overdid it. But there's a lot of mystery around soreness. We we still don't quite understand why or what or what's happening in the body i mean e everything you're saying spot on and true and then to add to that i would like to know what a comparable workout is because if it's not the exact same workout right. all it takes is one novel stimulus to be in That's your right. in your program mm -hmm. and you're going to get sore as hell so you may think because you do uh barbell back squats every single workout that you train and you and and then this this series of of movements afterwards that are and then today you did lunges you did lunges yeah. or bulgarian split squats or even front squats which are really similar but not similar enough that that little bit of a change of stimulus mm -hmm. is enough to make the body feel really sore if it's a movement that you haven't been practicing consistently so not that everything you didn't say that like, it could be yeah. that like if you did it so if she said i do the exact same workout every single every day and then for some reason sometimes i'm sore sometimes i'm not that would i think allude more to the direction that you yeah, were going yeah. with because even and then, I mean, I've I've noticed that too with people going and extending their range of motion, which they That's didn't it. realize. And it's just like, it's just a natural thing. You get more comfortable with that specific exercise and maybe you're just performing it with more depth this time or like you're doing it at a different pace or, you know, there's just certain like variables and characteristics that can contribute towards that. Yeah. Um, we do know that like uh, the negative portion of a rep tends to cause more soreness um, loading in a stretch position tends to cause more soreness. For example, you're more likely to get sore from a heavy chest fly with dumbbells than you would from cables uh, because uh, flies, you tend to load uh, heavier on the stretch. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh, it doesn't tell you, it, it tells you if you did too much, but I could make myself sore right now with the same intensity and everything, but just by changing the exercises. Yeah. And some exercises, like I said, are more likely to make you sore. It's it's pretty rare that I'd get sore from, let's say, uh, a lateral, side laterals. I could beat the shit out of my shoulders mm -hmm. side laterals. Um, but if I did uh, like an overhead press, I'm more likely uh, to get sore. So, But it doesn't tell you a whole lot. And, and I, I hate giving answers like that, but it's I just know. true. 
Well, and there's degrees of it too, right? Like you said, like you really know when you overdid it, when it's like, it's hard to even move and function the next day uh, versus like when you're just, you feel like a tightness and you feel like a little bit of a restriction, you know, it's like, okay, that's probably a decent spot. I get way less sore from heavy weight and really low reps than I do from my reps, period, end of story, all things being equal, right? If it's novel, that's different. But let's say consistently working out one way or the other, if I'm doing... 12 to 14 reps, I'm way more likely to get sore than if I'm doing sets of like three reps. I almost never get sore from the low reps, but I can feel it. I can feel that I worked out. It feels a little different. Does that mean one's more effective than the other? No. I mean, the key word in this to me is comparable. The fact that they used comparable uh, and not exactly the same, because if it was exactly the same, then I'm troubleshooting like you are. But if you say comparable to me, I'd be like, well, comparable in what sense? You follow the same sets and reps or you follow the exact same exercises because changing either one of those could easily make the difference totally. of you being sore. If you always train in the eight to 10 rep ranges, all of a sudden you go three to five in that workout, but same exercises, like you're probably going to get sore. Mm-hmm. And same thing goes, if you always train, uh, the tempo, rep you range. don't even change the tempo. Yeah. So, I mean, comparable to what is what I would want to know to like really be able to give you a more specific answer. All right. Next question is from Green Fitness. I have some kind of massive imbalance in my hips. In the past, I've hurt my back and right hip several times. And no matter how I train, it's like it always comes back. Now I stretch a pretty good amount and I always warm up. I can still handle load, but it constantly holds me back, especially on my deadlifts. This is a classic, Mm -hmm. classic example of a left to right imbalance. Okay. There's There's an asymmetry going on here. Now here's what happens. You train a particular way for so long. Uh, both feet on the ground, so bilateral type training, barbell exercise, even dumbbells, but both arms and legs at the same time. You do this for so long, your body has an imbalance and it just strengthens along with that imbalance to the point where that imbalance then gets in the way. And then you'll find that once you go past a certain weight or intensity, ow, I hurt myself. You could warm up all you want. You could stretch all you want. That strength imbalance is the issue. It's not necessarily a flexibility imbalance, although that's part of it. It's not necessarily an imbalance in any other way other than strength. If there's a strength imbalance and it's big enough, then you're going to have what are called repeating injuries. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what this person said. I keep hitting. So if you're listening to this right now and there's like one thing that always pops up once you get to a certain point, one of the best things you could do is an entire training cycle of unilateral training, real unilateral training. Map symmetry. Map symmetry would literally, for this person right here, if they followed map symmetry one to two times, they would probably solve this issue. Yeah. It would probably be the solution. I would, I would, I would add to to, um, and this is ever since the you know our great experience almost eight years ago now with Doctor Brink. Uh, look to the feet. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just not something that because you're you're talking about your hips and your low back, and so uh, rarely do people think that it's it's stemming from the foot. Yet more often than not, it, it is. is. I know. Yeah. So even though this is in your hip and low back. You're probably looking from the knees up, but many times there's, and it doesn't take much uh, because as it goes up, just like the the analogy that Sally says, if you're like barely off a degree and then you go miles out, that's a huge gap in between. Yep. Think of the same thing with a little bit of discrepancy on your right foot. So if it just slightly pronates, right. by the time it gets all the way up to your hip and your low back, there's a big difference. So that pay attention to that if there is a discrepancy from left to right. And, and normally the most common ones are the, the feet will externally rotate more on one mm-hmm. side or the ankle will will roll and pronate in. Uh, and then that will cause the caving in, the internal rotation of the femur, which then you get that asymmetrical shift that you're talking about. And it's all coming from you know foot strength, which is normally related to just overall foot strength and ankle mobility that's limiting you. And just, and again, the symmetry. And then if you have the ability to do symmetry barefoot and work barefoot, yeah. like I would, I would recommend doing that too. hundred percent. I mean, that's such an overlooked aspect of everything we're doing, especially like up the kinetic chain, how massively that affects all the rest of the joints and uh, you know, the, that sort of triangle of pressure, right? If you can just refocus and, and slow down and just kind of pay attention to that, like even in your stance and your walking patterns. That's like, that's heel, the ball of your big foot, and then the ball Right, of the, so like your big toe, toe pressure, your pinky toe, and then like where the tongue of your shoe is, right? right. And like having that whole forefoot sort of, okay. you know, contacting at the same time and like just trying to keep focused on that because you'll, you'll notice any kind of deviation from there and see what's happening. Uh, but two, even like they said that they stretch. And so what kind of stretches are you doing? I want to know 
Like what if this is a static stretch or you're actually doing mobility drills and, and doing things where priming. You, yeah, we're actually like strengthening and we're we're trying to uh, uh intensify that with muscle tension so your body feels like it has strength and control and stability there, not necessarily just trying to relax and get range of motion. Yeah, and you could also do this. Oh, this might be what's happening. Oh, this stretch feels good. So I'm gonna do this stretch. Well, yeah, you could alleviate the initial tension and issue, but you're not solving the root cause. By the way, this is an this is an experiment that someone can run that would illustrate what we're talking about. You could take a like an insert and put it in one shoe. And that'll literally lift your foot up by not even a quarter of an inch, like a quarter of an inch of an insert. So put like one of those Dr. Scholl's foot things in one foot and then walk around all day and tell me you don't notice a change <laughs> your in your low back. back. Yeah, yeah. Oh You'll start God. to feel, you might even feel tension up in your shoulder. Mm -hmm. And it's all coming from this like quarter inch rise in your foot that might all, might almost be imperceptible. So um, this this is how it happens. And so over the years of, of strengthening your body with this, you know, quote unquote, small imbalance becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. So yeah. literally, if you're listening to this, follow map symmetry like one or two times in a row and you'll probably solve this issue. Next question is from The Ordinary Yogi. When doing dips, how do you adjust body position to focus on chest or triceps? All right. So in layman's terms, uh, or, or generally speaking, being more upright will hit the triceps more. Leaning forward will hit the chest more. But you want to really think about what they both do, right? The tricep extends the elbow. So the more elbow flexion and extension in the dips, the more tricep I get. The pec takes the humerus, the upper arm, and brings it towards yeah, the center of the body. Depth. So the more my elbows come out and then come together, the more I'm going to get chest. So think of that as well, because I can actually be upright and still make it more chest. And I could lean forward and still make it more tricep right. based off of elbow yeah. and, 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 you know, the, the elbow positioning in essence. So kind of, I want to understand that by the way, that helps you with any exercise, any exercise you do. If you just look up muscle action on the internet and kind of picture it while you're doing the exercise, you're usually able to connect a little better to what you're trying to feel. Yeah. So if you're going dips, chest, uh, chest is upright and straight as possible. Elbows in tight. If for triceps, yeah. if you're going chest elbows flared, lean forward. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. get more, I well, mean, what you're explaining, I think is, uh, easy for us because yeah, that's what, I know. you know, we're in the business of, of <laughs> teaching people how to, you have to understand the mechanics. I think of, of a muscle is, is challenging for the average person. And so that's just, just an easy rule when you're doing dips. If you want chest, the el elbows are flared and you're leaning forward. If you want it, triceps, you're more upright elbows tucked in. Right Underrated outside. exercise, by the way, oh. phenomenally effective at developing, uh, all the pushing muscles, the front delts, the chest, and the triceps. Oh, I'll add exercise. one more to if you're having trouble too with that. Like, so if I really wanted to keep it out of my chest, I would shorten the range up a tiny bit. Also. Yeah, yeah. So the the deeper you go, the more chest and shoulders you're going to get yeah. involved. So if you're, which is a great thing, not a bad thing. But if I'm like today is arm day and I don't want to hit any chest or shoulders or anything like that, I'm going to actually not yeah, only stay up. Stop at that. 90 yeah, I'm going to stop at ninety degrees. I'm yeah. going to get down to ninety degrees, even though I could go probably another and six keep inches it in deeper. As you can. Yeah. I'm going to keep it in tight and stop and focus that. on yeah and i'm gonna elbow. i'm gonna stop that that movement with the triceps get a little bit of an isometric pause and then go back up and then you'll really feel it in your triceps last question is from do to do what is your opinion <laughs> on drop sets versus straight sets okay so a drop set is when you we'll use a let's say we'll use curls as an example so i do curls with let's say 35 pound dumbbells I do, let's say, 10 reps, and now it gets real hard. Maybe I could do one or two more, but I stop. Then I grab 30-pound dumbbells or 25-pound dumbbells. I do as many as I can, and then I got to stop, and then I'll grab a 20-pound or 15-pound dumbbell. So a drop set, also known as a strip set, is when you do X amount of reps with a weight and immediately switch to a lighter weight to be able to squeeze out more reps. And usually there's anywhere between two to five steps. I mean, you could do what's called run the rack, which is a drop set where you're going from you're going five pounds down and you're doing like six steps or whatever. It's a high intensity technique. It's a technique that's got value if used sparingly. Do not use these all time. Use them rarely. And then it's got some value. Straight sets is nine, where, where, where your set should be 95% of the time. And a straight set is you do your reps and you rest. And then you do your reps and then you rest. You rest, you know, between one to three minutes. That's 95% of your workout should be straight sets. The problem is a lot of people learn about these intensity type amplifiers, these, you know, drop sets and, and forced reps and negatives and all that stuff. And when you do them the first time, they feel amazing. You got a yeah. crazy pump and it's like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And then they do them all the time. 
this is a fast track towards overtraining, fast track towards halting your progress. So that, that was going to be the point that I made, which is th these are all great tools, uh, cluster sets, drop sets, pyramid sets, super sets, giant sets, like, and they're all different than your traditional straight sets. Straight sets, I think, should be a bulk of your training and your, your workout regimen. And then occasionally you use these tools, like all the ones I just listed, to intermittently interrupt your normal training. But what happens, to Sal's point again, I'm just going to piggyback off of it, is people do something like this. And I and by the way, this is not only understanding the science and speaking from that angle, but also the experience of doing this wrong yeah. for so many years myself, is you do that and you're like, oh, shit. The pump Oh, crazy. the pump. My arms blew up. Or, oh, my God, that, work, that was the best chest work I have forever. And then all of a sudden, you marry that and you become that person who does that all the time. So just beware of that. It's a great way. Now, how do I, how do I intermittently do this today? The, the things that like uh, I think are faster, like intensity, they're they're intense because the rest periods are short from, you know, when you talk about clusters and drop sets, things like yeah. that, where you go boom, 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 boom with no rest. So I like to use it when, when I'm in a time crunch. It's like- uh, I think that's the most valuable. I do too. I yeah. think it's like, so I know I shouldn't do it all the time. I know it's a valuable tool to interrupt my workouts once a month. Or, or sometimes once every two or three months, there's a workout where I'm like, ah, shit, I've only got 20 minutes today and I really wanted to get a good workout. Oh, you know what? I haven't done cluster sets or drop sets forever. I'm drop setting shit today. Yeah. And, that, and then now, I, not only do I have this novel stimulus because I don't do it that often, uh, but I also save time and get a, a full great workout in. Yeah. You know what? You know what's a, a rule of thumb with these is count all those as sets if you're trying to yeah. figure out your volume. In other words- a mistake I used to make was w I would count one drop set as it one was one because <laughs> <laughs> it was all one set, oh, right? But reality, if I drop down four times, four sets. Yes. So if I'm replacing straight sets with drop sets, every time I drop, that's all a set. So if I do four drops, that's four sets towards my shoulder workout. Which is why one. it's an incredible time saver. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can literally take your, your your basic straight set workout that takes you an hour and decide, hey, today I'm in a time crunch. I haven't done this in a long time. Mm -hmm. And you make everything a drop set. And you're going to be done in half the yeah, time. Yeah, I'm going to drop straight cluster strip it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a magic mic workout. Wow. Is, <laughs> Justin, do, do, did you ever do- Do you even know what any of these are? <laughs> I <know. laughs> I'm, just, I'm just listening. I'm like, yeah. oh, you guys are reminding me. Like, I've done all of them, but I don't remember the names. There's no real They're athletic- always sexy. Like, why are they all these sexy names? Because like, you know why? They make, so they they do well for studies, right? So if someone, okay. you put somebody in a, a, a six-week study and show yeah. them use cluster sets, you're going to see all this off the charts like yeah. response because it's because mm -hmm. of the intensity, intensity, right? And it's unique and different. makes good for magazine clip-out article stuff. That's why. Okay. You know? But for athletic purposes, I can't... I mean, aside from maybe strength stamina, uh, you might give someone like isolated strength stamina and a particular muscle. But I think for sports, you'd see more valuable, more value from maybe combining two or three exercises, not doing... The same exercise, maybe a, maybe a compound lift like a squat, yeah. but really, what are you going to get? You're going to get stamina out of it's it. It's more of a hypertrophy yeah. based yeah. tool. Yeah, it's a bodybuilding. Yeah, tool. it's yeah. more of a bodybuilding a tool than it tools. is a sports performance tool totally. for sure. Look, if Love you it. like fitness, but you're sick and tired of the fact that the fitness industry puts out garbage, literally ninety percent of stuff on the internet about fat loss, muscle building, and fitness is just crap. Try this. Go to askmindpump.com. This is our AI model. It'll answer your fitness question only based off of all of our episodes. So it's coming from us. That means it's accurate. Askmindpump.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 